Welcome to Third Person to First Person Metahuman Character, a tutorial for Unreal Engine 5. Before we begin, I'd like to tell you a little bit about myself. My name is David Tavares. I'm the lead game designer for the studio Occupational Hazard. I'm a certified Unreal Engine 5 world builder. I'm a proud member of the Unreal Fellowship, and I have a background in RPGs, being on the Gen Con staff, and as a tabletop DM, GM, and storyteller. Now let's talk a little bit about what we plan to achieve today. I'd like to show you how combining tutorials can help you achieve greater results. I'm going to show you two different tutorials. The first tutorial is toggle third to first person view. In that tutorial, you will be shown how to use a third person character and with a button press, switch it to first person view and back. The second tutorial will be metahuman mesh and character blueprint. Through this tutorial, you'll learn how to use a metahuman mesh on your character to make it have the great realistic effects that metahumans have. And then I'll show you how to combine the two tutorials together so that you now have a metahuman mesh that you can toggle third to first person view in the third person to first person metahuman character, which is this tutorial. I hope in demonstrating this, you will understand how all the various tutorials out there can help you advance your projects and how you can combine tutorials and judiciously figure out what needs to be changed based on the goals of the tutorial versus your goal, and how you can combine these different tools, techniques, and just learning tips and tricks to achieve your goals. Hello, I'm David Tavares, Unreal Engine 5 game designer and world builder. Today I would like to show you some methods of toggling between third-person view and first-person view when in an Unreal Engine 5.1 project. This course is targeting Unreal Engine version 5.1.1, yet it may be applicable in future versions as well. Let's get started. First, I will go over a brief description of the difference between third-person and first-person view. Then, I will demonstrate the enhanced input system necessary for the setup. Next, I will go over the anatomy of your character blueprint and the associated camera settings. Finally, I will show the character blueprint code necessary for two different versions of this toggle system to operate. I will conclude this tutorial with a brief overview and suggested next steps to be taken up on your own. Let's start by defining third-person and first-person character views. Third-person characters are seen by the player somewhere on their screen. Advantages of this view choice include getting to see the surrounding artwork and actions of the character, as well as getting to see directly around the character. First-person characters allow the player to see through the character's eyes. This allows for immersion and a detailed perspective of the environmental art. Both third-person and first-person character design have their advantages and disadvantages, and often players have a preference or need for one view or the other. When designing a game, the views chosen have an effect on how the rest of the game will be designed and built. For example, if a game is designed with the purpose of only using first-person view, the character model might not be rendered at all, which means suddenly adding a third-person toggle would require additional development in other areas such as uh, art and animation. For this reason, if you intend to use a toggle between third-person and first-person views, make sure to develop the entire project with both perspectives. Let's go ahead and jump right into the engine here. Um, I preloaded a third-person and first-person character. Uh, as you can see here on the left is the third person character, on the right is the first person character. Uh, if you notice, the first person character is just arms. It's because they didn't feel the need to render a body for the first person kit. Uh, this is how you add them to your uh, project. You can add a feature content pack here. Um, there's the option for the first person character. All you have to do is add it to project. Also for the third person character, you can also add that to project. I've already preloaded these two. If you have your own characters, uh, you can use those. Um, some characters might need some extra love and attention if you have like modular sets or anything like that. Um, first person characters, uh, you notice that it only has the arms. 
um, but we want the third person view so we're gonna have a whole body as you can see here because it's first person you just need to see the arm swing um, if you play in this character if you look down you won't see legs however in the third person uh, you get the whole body um, we're going to convert it um, using the third person character template since it has this whole body We're going to be using the Enhanced Input System, which is a feature in 5.1. Right here you can create a input mapping context. This is necessary for the Enhanced Input System. This is the new way that you actually control characters. You can see here there's the Jump, Move, and Look mappings. That's in the blueprint. Uh, it allows you to control the character use those. Here's the Jump, Look, and Move input actions. To create these, uh, to create the new one, you can just duplicate it, um, or if you need to create an entirely new one, uh, you can have the input action here. So I'll just go ahead and duplicate jump since our toggle is just going to be a one button thing. I'll rename this view toggle so we know what it is. If you open that up, you can see here it's got the Boolean digital value that just means it's just a either you uh, toggled it or you didn't there's other variables there if you have something that requires like mouse input or something you can find the on the mapping context you can find what we just created there the input action if you need more information on this there's plenty of uh, tutorials on the enhanced input system I might create some myself in the future um, binds the key to whatever you feel comfortable. I like the left shift. You can also do anything else like uh, another project like I have it uh, on tab or you know um, what else could you do just like a number or just any key really. I'll keep it to left shift for now. It's nice and easy for this simple demonstration. So let's go here to the event graph. So this is how you add an input mapping. Um, you've got to make sure that you get the controller um, that's attached to the enhanced input local player subsystem, that it's valid. And this is the uh, character mapping right here. Right now it's named default. I got a couple other in here named default because the, the first person also calls it default. So let's go ahead just to distinguish between them. Let's go in here and rename it. That way you know you've got the right one. I'll just call it third person for now. Since this is currently named third person character. See that it's still, still that one. So now this character has that input mapping. And these are the already, already the inputs that it already has. Movement input, jump input. If you need to get any of those, you can always import um, a feature pack and then you know the code it's really that simple and here's the the toggle view um, I'll put that in if you just type it into the event graph here you can get the enhanced input action view toggle I'll demonstrate a simple method of creating this toggle that we're working towards so that's first look at this camera the follow camera this is where you see the character as a third person if you notice the first person camera was uh, like in their body so we can uh, go ahead and add to the mesh a second camera now two cameras aren't necessary you'll see that in my advanced version will do after this but um, if you do need two cameras like just quickly uh, jump between them you can add it here uh, please, uh, uh, one version you can do is you can uh, socket, do, use the parent socket to the head. Um, that way it's rooted there. If you notice, it kind of moves with the body. Um, here's some settings. If you rotate it to 90 degrees on the z-axis and negative 90 on the x-axis, now it's right in the head. And you have a first-person view there.
Let's bump it up a little bit, a little higher, a little more forward. So 10 and 20, that looks all right. It's basically in the head, works with the animation. If that's not something you desire, you don't have to socket it to the head, but you can. There's the third person camera. Use pawn, control rotation. Uh, needs to be on uh, because if you're going to swivel your head around, you're going to need to control it there rather than the boom camera, uh, which is a slight change because the, the, the way it behaves with the first person and third person is slightly different. So you're going to have to set the settings this way. So follow closely with those. First thing you'll have to do is deactivate the cameras with the view toggle. Uh, for if you don't, then you'll have two active cameras and that'll be very confusing. So let's rename these so we know which is which. Follow camera is the third person camera. And the other camera is the first person camera. Bring them both in there. They're both deactivated upon start of hitting the button, which is left shift in my case. Now you're going to want to branch. Um, this is instead of a flip-flop. Uh, a lot of people like to use a flip-flop. However, I like to use a variable. Is first person question mark. There it is. The reason I use a variable is that way I can uh, with other blueprints and other parts of the program, I can always pull up which view I'm in, just in case that matters for my future design. So since first person start says false, the first time I hit the button, it's going to go through the branch to the false, then I activate the first person camera. So I've started as third person, now I'm first person. You can swap this around if you want it the other way, if you want to default to first person. Um, but the way I'm doing it is starting with third person. And then I change this variable. That way it knows that it can switch again. If you're interested in just doing the flip-flop version, if I could spell flip-flop, this is the node you use. See, it's very similar. There just wouldn't be a variable component necessary in that case. However, then you would have, um, there would no, you wouldn't have the variable to call elsewhere to, to see what the character is using currently. Then you're going to want to set the user control rotation yaw. This lets you actually have more control and look around, which uh, previously that your control rotation was over the camera boom, and now it's going to be over the actual camera, so that you just gave yourself access there. You're also going to want to grab the character movement because this is going to change around a little bit. Uh, there's a lot of little changes, which is why people tend to choose either first person or third person for their games. And uh, toggling it means that you have to make these adjustments. So the orient rotation, rotation of movement is off. And you're going to do the same when you so the other way, when you hit the button again, you are going to activate third person, go back to it. So you just reverse all these. We're in the other state. Make sure the third person camera is activated so you can see it. Recompile that. It's always good to compile whenever you can so you can see what's going on. Oh, and uh, make sure you to change the game mode to whatever game mode you're using. That way things are just easily tested right away. Hit play. Look, I now have control over this character. 
I'm in first person mode. I've looked down, I see my body. You couldn't do that with first person before. That's me, I'm in control. My rotation's all working. First person again, that's my body. So yeah, it's, it's really that simple. That's the simple method. Um, let's jump around a bit more here. <laughs> you can see it's uh, very smooth and I can jump back and forth between first person and third person, no problem, but it's abrupt. Um, if you want something more of a more smooth transition, uh, I've got my advanced method here. It's a little different. You only use one camera, in fact. So let's go back into the blueprint here. That's the quick, quick and dirty method that's commented out. It's always a good best practice to comment out any code that you write. Uh, be as specific as, can, as you can. Um, I'm just doing this quick, so I'll just say simple third to first person toggle. Now let's make a more advanced version. Um, instead of adding a different input key, I think I will just use this one again. So I'm going to break that and pull this down. Let's see here. Next step is to... All right, so this time it's not going to be on started. It's going to be on uh, triggered. The reason is I want to sort of have kind of like a cooldown. It's a uh, uh, gating um, uh, when I hit the button. The other one, I can just spam the button and, and go back and forth between the views. Uh, this one, I'm going to have um, a one second timeline run. So we're going to use the same variable is first person. Uh, this should be used instead. I want to use both the simple and advanced method. Um, of course, I'd, I'd like you to make your own method and you could share that with me. So uh, play the timeline to start. If you're not familiar with timelines, it's actually really interesting. It lets something happen over a period of time. Um, let's add... add a... I'm just experimenting here. One second. rename then this track. So anyway, uh, um, a timeline lets you just um, have something happen over a period of time versus happening instantly when you call it. You can set a key. I'm setting it to time zero, value zero. You can set a second key time one and then hold on a second here I might have gotten myself a little lost yeah I don't want that I I did the wrong type type sorry about that I make mistakes I'm 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 human <laughs> uh, so you want add float track not add vector track for this uh, key curve okay time zero value zero, um, add key curve, uh, time one, value one. So that's just one second to increase to value one. So you're either, you have it or you don't, that's zero or one. Um, so I'm just having this happen over one second. You can have it as long as you want. If you want this to take a very long time, like five seconds or something, if you want it to be like really, really short, 0.1 seconds. Um, if you want an instance, you don't even need the timeline, just tell it to do it instantly. That's what happened in the simple version. Um, so let's uh, rename the track so we know what the output is to time. And you can see here it says time. So now it's going to, over the period of one second, change from zero to one. If you play it from start. If you play it from reverse, it starts at one and goes to zero. So now we have this variable that happens over time. And since it's one or zero, we can multiply it by a number to make it whatever that number is. So that sets um, whether it's first person or not, depending on where it branches after you hit the key. So 
So play from reverse from end, because I want that one to be the other way around. If you notice, it now says timeline zero for the second one that I copied. Um, you can name the timelines um, different things. Like I could could have named that one reverse, but we don't need that now. So I'll just continue. We're just going to use this one camera. So this camera is going to move up here where that other camera is. So if you use this version, you don't even need the second camera. So we're going to set the arm length because we're moving it up there. We basically need the arm length to be zero because then it's just at that location on the body. So it's first person view. However, we want the arm length to be the full length when it's third person view. So let's make sure this math works out. So since we're going from zero to one, we multiply that number by 400. Why 400? Um, that's because that is the length of the arm, the camera boom arm. So whatever that it, that's the desired effect there is, if you want it 350, make that 350. If you want it 1,000, make it 1,000, depending how far you want the camera away from the character. Uh, you could take that same number and put it down here, and the opposite's happening because I'm playing it from reverse. So it's going to go from 400 to 0. So the length shortens when you go first person. However, that would put it like in the middle of the abdominal area because that's where the boom is rooted right now. So we're gonna have to do a little bit of a trick here where we change the location of the boom to be up here with the, where the third person camera is, or sorry, first person camera, where the head is. Although this time we're not um, rooting it to the parent socket like we did last time. Uh, this will hinder any movement from the animation, which is fine because you know, people can get nauseous from all that jostling anyway. Okay, set relative location, the camera boom, it always pulls up that second one, I forget about that. All right, so um, this is gonna be a local location, so split that pin so you can only get the X, Y, and Z. We're only going to edit the Z um, here. So subtract, but change this around so we're wanting the inverse because we want the opposite for this. Um, we're making the, when we want the length to be 400, the, we want the Z to be zero. So that's the opposite direction. And when we, and the other one, when we want it to be zero, we're going to want to move it up. So multiply by 80. Uh, the the number 80, that comes from the height of the character, which is 160, so 80 is half of it. So that'll move up to the head, since it starts in the middle. I'll just make this zero. This is its uh, the camera boom's initial location. It was at eight, but that's practically, that's very close to zero in game terms and, and measurement. I'll move it forward a bit, 20, because that's kind of irrelevant in the grand scheme of things, but it helps it uh, helps it not collide with the head. And I'll do the same here so that that doesn't change at all. Everything, it's always 30. See, it's the he little head. And that way you don't see the inside of the face. If there was, if this was a modular character, you could do something fancy like making the um, modular headpiece go invisible. Uh, when you're in first person, but uh, that's not necessary here. We could move go forward a little bit. Um, there's a lot of small variations you can do here. Um, this needs to be duplicated down here, so it's following the same pattern. The inverse, that's what the one minus is. It makes it the inverse. So this is going to be the inverse times 80, which will bring it down to zero. And as I said, there's like this cooldown here. 
Um, so when the timeline is finished, when the one sec second is up, that do once gets reset so you can do it again. Then there's this variable, um, the use controller rotation yaw that we mentioned up here. You gotta make sure that that is set properly. Um, but this needs to be set before the do once resets in this direction. So I'll put that down here. Otherwise you're gonna be a little, little jostled when it happens. You can test it out if you wanna see how that works out without it in this location. I'll clean up the blueprint a little bit. Feel free to like test things out in different parameters. Maybe you can make a better version than the one I've got here. Um, but this is almost finished. So we should have a little fun Clean it up a little bit more here when the timeline ends the do once gets reset that way we can toggle it once again it's like a one second cooldown basically we got to make sure that all these other settings are still in place too just like the simple so let's get the character movement orient rotation to movement make sure that's all correct in the right place all of this code I will include in the unreal uh developer community. Um, so I'll keep a link to that in the YouTube version of this and in the developer community you should see all these uh, additional code that I wrote um, actually in the tutorial uh, section, the written area. Um, follow the link if you are in the YouTube version in the description below. So set the pawn rotation as well. That's the one thing that I didn't have in there. Let me make sure I get all these right, which is supposed to be on, which is supposed to be off. You can also experiment with these if you want to do things a little bit differently. Toggle what you want. There we go. Okay, that's the correct version right here. So, pawn rotation this way, orient rotation to movement this way, and let's play. This is what I was talking about. You see, you run around, you got third person here, and whoa, zoom in, first person. So you pan in, pan out. That's the power of the timeline. And you only need one camera to do this. Pan in, pan out. I can run in all crazy directions. It's fairly smooth. Now you can improve the animations. This is just the basic animations that come with the standard template. In this tutorial, we learned two different methods to toggle from third person to first person and back the other way. A simple method that directly just swaps between the two, and an advanced method that pans smoothly between the two. I recommend you try to create your own method uh, for your own needs and make sure that any considerations for design and the environment match whatever you end up doing. Also, further considerations can be animations to make sure that your character looks correctly when they're moving and doing this toggling. You might want to make it so that the character is rooted there when they swap between the two for certain types of games, really depending on what you're trying to do. Make sure that your design matches the functions that you put in there. Hopefully I can make some more tutorials in the future. Thank you, and I'm looking forward to see what you create. Hello, and welcome to MetaHuman Mesh and Character Blueprint, a tutorial for Unreal Engine 5. In this module, we will go over how to make a custom MetaHuman, how to download MetaHumans from Bridge to Unreal Engine 5, and how to apply MetaHuman meshes to the third-person character.
We will start by making a custom MetaHuman. To do this, we will launch the MetaHuman Creator. And I'll show you how to create a new MetaHuman by choosing a starting point. We will explore the MetaHuman Editor. And then we'll finish up by showing you how to modify your existing MetaHuman creation. To make your own custom MetaHuman, you'll have to go to metahuman.unrealengine.com. And here you'll have to select the version of the MetaHume Creator, which you want to launch. Right now there's the main version right here. All you have to do is click the Launch Latest MetaHume Creator. Also, if you want to do an alternate version of doing this, where you use the Mesh to MetaHuman, that will require the MetaHuman plugin for Unreal Engine 5. However, standard importing of both preset and custom created MetaHumans only requires access to Quixel Bridge. And to create your own, all you have to do is click the Launch Latest MetaHuman Creator. As this says, it will take a while to connect to the MetaHuman Creator. This is all on the cloud. To speed this up, I will fast forward. Now that MetaHuman Creator has fully booted up, you can see my MetaHumans. These are custom MetaHumans that I've already created. There's quite a variety. If this is your first time entering the MetaHuman Creator, this area may be empty and you actually might default to this Create tab. Click the Create tab if you're not already in it. This will take a second to load properly. Here you can see the library of pre-made MetaHumans. Now there is no true default state for a MetaHuman where you can start to create from scratch. The way you make a MetaHuman is you choose a pre-made MetaHuman that's ideally closest to the MetaHuman you wish to create. You'll also see that these warning signs, there's certain meshes on them, whether it's hairstyles, beards, or something. That can only be displayed at level of detail 0 and 1, that's very high level of detail. So if you want any lower level of detail, you'll have to choose, either choose a starting point that doesn't have one of these warning signs, or once you go into the starting point with a warning sign, you'll have to change whichever components have those level, level of detail warnings. So let's start with Drove. Since he has these warnings, we'll try to find those, those warnings and get rid of them. It creates selected. And now this is a new metahuman. I can change his name. Let's say I will name him Danny. The reason I renamed him is because Drove is specifically this guy. And this MetaHuman uses grooms that are currently in development, only displayed at level of detail 0 and 1. So you can see the interface here, you have the viewport. You have the animations down here on the bottom. Right now he's in the idle animation. You can change the animations here. I can make him happy. Now he's not animated, but he's in the happy state. There are expression loops. So he can be happy and animated. There are several other animations here I'll let you go through. There's other types of poses and animations here as well. For the face and for the body. There are other expressions and poses you can find here as well. You can also pause or completely stop your animation. I'll let it run because he looks like a very jolly fellow. You'll see your hotkey reference right here. This is important to note, especially if you're new to MetaHuman, because it tells you how you can do a bunch of different functions 
For example, face camera is one. I believe we're already at face camera. Body camera is two. I just hit two. Torso camera is three. This is if you want to see the detail of their clothing, for example. Legs is four. Feet is five. Six is a far off camera, so you can see the whole, whole body. Everything. What I like is smiling face. So let's figure out what grooms are only zero and one. Likely the beard and the hair. So here you can see on the left panel, this shows the different faces and the face features. For example, I can change the skin tone. That's an interesting color. There we go. Maybe make them like that. Change the eye color. Can even go deep into it, change the iris, change all the other features. There we go. Nice eyes. Maybe a little bit greener there. I think that looks nice. Show the teeth. Add some variation to the teeth. Teeth color, maybe a bit, a bit more white. Gum, it's a little bit more red. There we go. This is an interesting feature here. So, in here in the viewport, you have this blend. And you also have sculpt and move. These are features where you can change parts of the face. For example, I, this is in blend right now. I can grab this. Oh, I can't do anything yet because I don't have anything here. You need to get the blend function here. And now what you can do is you look at other presets. You have to add at least three. So let's add Bernice. Ayo. Brian. You can add even more. Bess. Now I have four. So now you see this mirrors what I've got here. I can now start making parts of the face look more like whoever I'm moving it towards. Notice the, the shape. It's got that cross because it's here. It's crossing. So whichever one I take the I guess this is his right cheek since mirrored. If I do this, it just very subtle changes to make the metahuman look more like that individual preset. You can also sculpt individually and move parts of the face to customize it the way you want it. You can customize skin, eyes, teeth, makeup. Now the lie shadow there. That looks nice. Red lipstick. Other color lipstick. Blush. But let's get to the LOD issues. So, head. Oh, style, that's why I was... It was stuck in details up here. So the beard looks good, actually. These are the warning beards. So he can maintain his fabulous long beard. I'm kind of jealous, actually. That's a great-looking beard. And... So probably the hair style. So we have this hairstyle. You see, this is where the warning is. So let's say I like his long hair. What other long hair could I do? Maybe this one? It looks kind of like a hippie. So I rotate him like this, I'm holding down the middle mouse button. Holding down the right mouse button does the same to rotate. Pan in and out with the mouse button as well. 
You can have different body types in the proportions. Notice the warning went away when I changed his hair. You can have different clothing that say, I'd rather he was wearing a hoodie. You can also add details and graphics to it. Say he likes some nice surfboards, surfer dude. Oh, that is bright. There we go. Nice pink. Where's a nice color that complements that? There we go. That's not that's not too bad. Actually kind of looks ridiculous, but I like it. So once you're done with that, this automatically saves. So all changes are saved. It will give you a warning if you try to X out of the browser. If you want to have different looks at them, you can also use the studio function up here. See what it looks like in a city, downtown night. Underpass at night. Give him a nice animation to see and preview what he looks like. Peace. <laughs> there we go. There's my hippie. Hippie Danny. You can get the LODs here. So this is what he looks like with very, very high LOD. So low res. This is for very far away. And this is what he looks like very high res. And if you want to see him more ray traced, there you go. Such a happy guy. Looks great. Anyway, let's move on to getting Danny into Unreal Engine. Importing MetaHuman from Quixel Bridge to Unreal Engine 5. I will show you how to use Bridge in Unreal Engine 5, how to download MetaHuman files, and how to add these files to your project's content folder. Make sure you have the Unreal Engine 5 project open that you want to use the MetaHumans in. First thing you'll have to do is make sure that the Bridge plugin is installed. You can do that by clicking Edit Plugins and then searching for bridge. If it's not installed, click this button, this check mark right here to make sure that it is installed and then restart the engine. The tab for bridge should appear right here. You can also go Windows, Pixel Bridge, and it will go to the tab. You'll have to log in. Once you're logged in, go to this tab right here that looks like the little person in a circle. You'll see here are the presets. And the next tab down is My MetaHumans. You can see here, here's Danny alongside all my other MetaHumans. Check mark means it's downloaded already. Since I just created Danny and he was saved on the cloud, he's here and not yet downloaded. It's just accessing what's on the cloud. Here you can choose the quality of the asset you wish to download. I would stick with highest quality unless you have uh, issues and you can't get in. These settings should be all right. If you click download, the download will begin. I'll skip ahead until the download is finished. Once the download is finished, you'll see that the check mark is now there. You can now click Add. It imports the assets to your project. Once it's finished loading, 
you can either navigate it to it in your browser, your content browser, to your MetaHumans folders where it will download to. Or if you want to zoom directly to it, you can click the Add button again. If you get a pop-up saying that the data's changed, you probably can ignore that. I'm not sure what that is, but it doesn't seem to affect anything that I've been working with thus far. But if anyone knows, please let me know. You can navigate down to MetaHumans folder in your content browser. This shows where the different MetaHumans are. Danny is also here. You can see Danny right here in the corner. It's preparing his shaders. You can double click his blueprint. And there he is. Your creation is now in Unreal Engine. Now let's work with these files. Adding metahuman meshes to playable character. We will now prep a third person character. I'll show you how to add mesh components to this character and then how to adjust the skeletons and animations. Before we add our metahuman components to our character, we need a base character that works in the level. An easy way to do that is to add a feature pack. You can add the content from the third person. This is a good one to use. You could also use some of these other ones if you would like. I've already added a third person project to this project as well. I've even modified this a bit in a prior tutorial so that I can switch between third person and first person. You'll see the third person folder in your content browser. And if you look in blueprints, you'll find this blue third person character double click on that. You can see here's the additional code I added from my other tutorial. Here's, if you, if you didn't go through that other tutorial, you won't have this, but you will have the rest of this. Now that you have this third person character, I recommend as a best practice to whenever you change something from its base form, to make a duplicate just so you don't, if you mess up, you don't mess up everything that's come before it. So this one could be the third person. Actually, you know what? I'll call it. Blueprint meta third person. And this is what we'll be editing. Now its base mesh is currently the Quinn sample. We're going to want to change that. So find your blueprint of the metahuman that you created. So we're using Danny here, old Danny boy. If you look at this, metahuman blueprints have, a, instead of just a mesh, get rid of the standard third person character. So Quinn has just a mesh. But we want this uh, meta third person character to be Danny. Danny as a meta human has body, feet, legs, torso, face, all these complex forms and pieces. So the base form is going to be the body. You notice that all of these are children of the body component. So what you're going to want to do is find the body component. So this is Danny's body. You can see his hands and his ankles, which I thought was an interesting choice with the, uh, the way they create metahumans. Hands and ankles are the body. Make sure it's selected and in the mesh that you're changing. 
add it to the skeletal mesh asset. And in the viewport, you can see what just happened. Actually, let me, let me uh, un undo it here. You see this Quinn? And if I redo it, adding the mesh, now you notice it becomes unanimated. That's because it kicks it out of Quinn since it has a different skeletal mesh. So you want to make sure it has the same skeletal mesh. You go back here to the body, you right click, skeleton, assign skeleton, and Quinn's, if you want to find what it, what it was, you can, you can go to that mesh component, but this one is the skeletal mesh skeleton. Hit accept. And then if you add one of the mannequin blueprints, you see the animation is now there. Obviously we want more than just the hands and the feet. So the next step is to add all of these components, the feet, the legs, the torso, the face, and all the grooms here. Copy these. You're also going to want the LOD sync. But let's do that in a second. Let's grab these first. Copy. And paste it into mesh. Make sure these are all in the right order. No, they're not. They're not oh, children of mesh. Now they are. And doing that, it's kicked out all the grooms. Make these children a face. There we go. And notice it's all up there now. You still have the body down here. And it looks like he still has the animation. And somewhat of the animation. His feet aren't moving. But the, the upper body seems to be. So what you do is you take all these things that we just added, all these components. Or at least the main components here, not the grooms. You can see over here the rotation's 90. Make that zero. Now he's facing the right way. And the location, also zero. That looks a little bit better. Animation's still not quite right. Click on each of the components. And under animation, to sync up the animation, change it to anim preview attached instance. That's something that comes with metahumans, so that animations can sync up. Do the same with the feet. Uh, you don't have to do the same with the face, that has its own anim blueprint. Face and blueprint, special for metahumans. But you might as well do it for the torso too. That should all be synced up. Now we're actually almost finished with this method. If we go back here and select the character blueprint and go to from details to world settings if you change the default plot pawn class make sure that the game mode is the third person game mode if you change the default pawn class to your newly created blueprint and you hit play we now have a working fully animated Metahuman. Doing all the things you would expect him to do, except you notice his hair is flashing in and out. That's because the LOD isn't set properly. It's kind of sitting between LOD ranges. So to fix that, go back to your blueprint. Notice that there's no LOD component here. So go to Danny's original blueprint. There's a lot of nice tools that are with the base blueprint. You can see down here there's a many different functions. For instance, if you want to do AR kit face setup, 
live link retargeting bunch of different functions here that you can pull if you don't need them you don't have to move them over but if you need them like we need this LOD sync copy it paste it now I have an LOD, LOD sync what you'd like to do with your LOD sync is you'll see over here number of LODs there's two different things you could do you can either force a single LOD or you can limit the LODs right now there's eight if you want to keep them two is a good good number to choose now only two LODs will show you can pile notice you don't get a change anymore so what I'm demonstrating now is my other tutorials ability to change between first person and third person so you can see your own body as you're running notice that he's seeing his head too so that's due to the fact that this character model is shorter than Quinn I believe I have a Quinn over here so if I just run and jump up to her you notice that I'm quite a bit shorter the metahumans the base normal height are shorter than the mannequins. So to adjust that, I'm going to go back into this blueprint. I'm going to find the camera and adjust the location. I believe it's the here it is. So this times 80 in this advanced third person to first person toggle is the height that the camera goes to. So if I change this to 70 instead of 80, should go down by 10 units. Let's see what that looks like. A little better. Not perfect. Heads a little forward. So let's move the X axis, I believe it is, a little forward too. So starting with the camera, forward by 20. No, X location 30. Okay, so the X location is now 30. So let's start, change that to 30. And there's just going to be a little minutia, little, little small adjustments that might be required to suit whatever purposes you have. Let's try that. Okay, that looks a lot better. You can run and see, see your arms and legs flailing as you move. Excellent. So there you go. Crazy Surfer Dude is now in your level. Fully animated. And ready for adventure. Inclusion and next steps. We went over creating your own metahuman, importing metahumans, adding metahuman mesh to a character blueprint. Now you can try customizing using your own methods. Please experiment with mesh components and animations, and seek out further information on forums, documentation, and tutorials. Thank you, and have fun learning! For further examples and resources, see the Unreal Engine official documentation, the Unreal Engine samples in the Unreal Engine launcher, the Unreal Engine Marketplace free assets, including the free assets you can find the first Tuesday of every month, which are a limited time, you get once per month. The Epic Dev Community is a great resource where you can reach out to fellow creators and discuss what you're creating and troubleshoot any issues you might be having. YouTube and other similar social media are 
great resources to find creators that have similar tutorials. Some of the creators that I know that are very reliable and skilled include Matthew Wadstein, Ryan Laley, Unreal Sensei, Matt Asplund, Gorka Games, Smart Polly, and Jabutsu. I'll make sure they are linked in the comments below. There are also many courses online and at learning institutions. Thank you for your time and support. I hope you learned a lot. You can see more of my videos at Occupational Hazard on YouTube. If you can, please support me on patreon.com slash occupational hazard. And you can see the latest and greatest of what I've been up to on my website at www.occupationalhazardllc.com.